I would say good evening, but it's not a good evening, is it? I'm normally mild mannered, calm one, along with Craig, obviously. But what an absolute bloody shambles our football club is at the moment. How the hell did that happen? We, they gift us a red card. Decore, what a stupid idiot. We get one nil up with a gift of a penalty, and we sit back and just let them attack us. What the bloody hell went happened there, Craig? Same old, same old. Same shit, different day. Simple <laughs> as that. It's, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a saying, isn't it? If it looks like a duck, sounds like a duck, and feels like a duck, it's definitely a duck. And I think when it comes to that Tottenham side today, it felt like Conte looked like Conte, and we got the same result as Conte ball. No different. And what do you expect? You know, it's nothing has changed. So, you know, I, I've said on this show previously that I think what we needed with Conte going was a change. We needed something as a catalyst to drive the team forward to have any hope of getting top four. We haven't had that. The reality is we've, um, you know, we've been saying in the group chat, we've installed the business continuity plan of uh, Stellini and, um, and Mason. And that's what you get, folks. You get the same old, same old. So what I'm going to do here is because he, he's going to get redder and redder in the bottom corner of the screen. I'm going to leave Gibbo to keep seething. And we're going to go all the way to Vienna. HG smiling, at least. <laughs> what do you think, HG? I, I, I just want to watch the three of you go mental for a change. Usually it's me, the one that's doing the renting. Um, I think you all are in the same WhatsApp group as me when I put in about, what, 10 minutes ago. We all know this how this is ending. Um, I didn't want to watch it because I knew what was going to happen. And it happened. I, I, I should feel somewhat smug, but I don't. I, I want to be wrong. But it happens all the time. It's not just this season, really, but I feel like other teams, they can, they can manage a game. They can play the ball. We had an extra man. It never looked like we had an extra man. It was, it was painful. It was actually painful to watch it. Like, even the penalty, I had my shirt over my eyes like this because I was like, I expect Kane to score, but everything matters that much more when it's April. And, and yet we're still making the same mistakes. So, all right, Brendan's coming to get us. It's all good. Oh, I'm not really Do a that. better fucking job. Right. He's saving. Look at him. Look at that head. <sighs> go on, Gibbo. I'll, I'll build up to it as we go on, mate. It's just like Craig said and HG said, same shit, same tactics, same fucking bunch of cowards on the pitch. The only positive I'll take from that tonight is that then there is nine games left. I cannot wait for this season to be over. It's it's literally ruined my TV viewing time. There's so much more I could be doing than watching them. I mean, we'll get into it, but like, just oh, one nil up against ten man Everton, who were absolutely garbage, and they were they were crap, and we just and literally decide to sit back and just casually knock it around, loose touches, loose passes, same crap, different day. I'm just, I've just had enough. It is just absolutely fucking woeful. I mean, Kerry's got the question. I think I mentioned it before we went live. What, what's wrong with Dan Juma? That bloody Lucas Mora, who we all know, bless him, love the guy for, you know, Amsterdam, but that was four years ago. He's not good enough. And he was unlucky with red card. It was a red card, but that's not what he meant to do. But what's wrong with Dan Juma? Can anyone, correct HG, can you answer me that? Uh, perhaps it was another club signing. I mean, whatever that means. I just, nothing, frankly. At Spurs, he's done nothing wrong. I can't imagine in training, you know, he's, he's pissing up the wall with the showers. I, you know, do you know what I mean? There's nothing there that makes you think this guy's, this guy's a wrong one. Um, but yeah, to, to to see, well, like we all like we all know Lucas is there, but none of us, even now, none of us think oh, they, they're going to pick Lucas again. Like surely they'll give Dan Juma a go. Like Sun's been woeful. That's Dan Juma's side. Um, it's not Lucas's side. It's never been Lucas's side. They won't pick Lucas again. Like Lucas will come on if we need a bit of pace, but uh, there's no real reason to bring him on at all. He's not the future of Spurs. Um, but yeah, we do repeatedly. <laughs> So uh, I, either I am always wrong, um, but I, I think tend to, I think a lot of people tend to agree with the fact that we just shouldn't we shouldn't spend any more time with him. 
Um, I don't, I, I, even Amsterdam, like it felt like a dream when it happened. Now it, it's like if we've had four years of Lucas because of it, is it a dream or is it a nightmare now that we've stuck with him for so long when he's been rubbish for so long? You know, De- De- Delhi was never as bad as Lucas has been, never. And people gave Delhi all manner of rubbish. Lucas has had one good night and he just gets away with it. He should be nowhere near Spurs. Absolutely, it should have gone three seasons ago. Crazy. Mike, what was the worst decision? Bringing on Lucas Moura or bringing on Davinson Sanchez at left centre-back? Um, I'm going to say the Sanchez decision, actually, um, only because I, I I do think that we, sh- we could have done something else. If it was me, I would have probably left Ling Lay on and brought in Saar into midfield just to try and show up a bit in there. Try and, try and get to a point where we could dominate the ball. Someone who's comfortable on the ball. We're putting um, Sanchez on. He's not the best on the ball, on the right-hand side of the defence. So we'll play him on the weaker side of the back three. And then in a, in a, in a system whereby, for some strange reason, we were playing out in, in, in patterns that we just couldn't do well. And we invite pressure on. Um, it, was, it was a crazy, crazy decision in my mind. That said... Lucas coming on was equally stupid and, and everything HG said is right. It's we, we've said months and months ago, didn't we give a, you know, we didn't think Lucas should see be on the spur, have, you know, put on the shirt again. He's done. His time at the club is done. Yet we're persisting with him over Dan Juma. I just don't understand it. I think Dan Juma has slept with Stellini's wife or something. I don't know what he's done. Just it's baffling, mate. Yeah, we bought, we bought um, Dan Juma. And since he's, we've actually brought him in, Lucas, I know he, he's, he's been injured and he's come back, but he's had more game time. The minute we mm. bought, got Dan Juma <clears throat> in, he's had more game time. It's baffling. But, you know, I don't think he's very good. But at the minute, I don't think he can be a lot worse than Son because like the elephant in the room, mate, Son was woeful. Woeful again. Woeful with the ball. Woeful at getting into, area, into good areas. Just really, really poor. And it's like, um, every, no... People might not agree with me, but it's like Larice came straight back in today. Um, Forster hasn't been amazing, but he's not been bad. And, and Larice comes back in. Like Son keeps his place constantly. He's not been very good. It's just too comfortable for a lot of Spurs players. They just know they're going to play, or they, and you know, it's just, mate, it's just stale. It's just, a, it, I just get the feeling. Watch, it's just like a rudderless ship. It's awful to I, I, i'm with hg i mean i could have turned it off earlier you knew that we were just they were gonna they get a chance and like they were down to 10 men and they're finding space it's we can't pass the ball we struggle to progress the board players like kulazewski and son are nowhere at the same levels as they were last season kulazewski just looks really slow it's just poor to watch mate and the decisions from the coaching staff are just as bad just as bad there is they're to, as much to blame for me. I think it's interesting. You talked about how the players aren't brave on the ball. Well, our back three are. Our back three love a bit of pressure. <laughs> we'll, we'll move the ball forward with them. It, it's just crazy. Like, every time... I mean, I say every time. It feels like whenever Hoiberg or Skip get the ball under pressure, they turn into winks and they go backwards. And I understand yeah. that that's the easy choice and that's the one which you... Maybe you think it's, it's the best option. But there were so many occasions where it's not the only option, but there's, it's almost like they've been trained to do it. And that's when the score was nil-nil. Like, not when we're trying to see out the game. Like, I feel like the first 15, 20 minutes, we were the better side. It looked like we were going to do something. And then Everton realised that they're playing Spurs, and all they need to do is press. And that was it. After that, the ball would have been in our half the entire game, had it not been for the Ducore's red card. That was it. Spurs cannot play through a press. They don't have runners up top. No. Son stands there with his hands on his hips the entire time. Like, no one expects Kane to run the channels or Kulusevsky to... Like, that, that's never been their game. But if you don't have the one pacey guy stretching the centre-backs, then, yeah, it, it's easy. It's easy for any team. Everton are nothing special, and yet, you know, we make them look competent by not even trying. So I'm just... Uh, I mean, it, it, it's the same, and that's why I don't want to be talking about it, because we all know what the issue is. And we're not trying anything different. I understand that no. we've got lots of players out injured, but that wouldn't have changed anything. We still would have played the same way. 
So yeah, we may only have 12 or 13 players that the manager trusts, if it's that many, but it's just, we, we've got to do something different. Sneaking a 1-0 thanks to a, you know, a, thanks to a penalty, that's not what Tottenham do. That's never what Tottenham have done. And we can't manage games. And like the, the best Tottenham that I've ever seen, whether it's Pochettino or whoever, is a Tottenham that wants to attack, that wants to go and get a second goal. It's not one that sits on leads and, and hopes that the other side won't build some momentum. Because as we saw tonight, it only takes 10. Everton had momentum before Lucas went sent off. We all thought they were going to score before Lucas went off. The fact he did made it a bit easier for them. But it's just so predictable. None of us hey, work hey. in football. HG, we if, if, yeah. if you want to thicken it up against 10 men, if you want to like thicken it up against 10 men, why not put an extra man in the middle of midfield? Why not go like 3-5-2, yeah. bring Sarri? Why not try that different? Why, like well, putting uh, Sanchez on the left side of a back three, like Craig said, he, he's not comfortable on the right side of a back three. And I know Langley would no, give away a couple of fouls, but why don't somebody like get hold of him and say... And calm down, like they do, like Romero give a ridiculous free kick away in the first half when somebody just turned him and he just clipped his hand. Why is nobody getting hold of these players and, and sort of like getting into them and, tr- and trying to like calm them down or trying to get them to see sense? Somebody get hold of Lengley, then put an extra man in midfield. Just do something different that the opposite team aren't going to know about. I, I, but it's it the same. Like the, yeah, it feels like they're looking at the Southampton game where obviously Saar came on, did exactly what yeah. you just asked for, and conceded the penalty that wasn't. But it's almost like, oh, well, that was a mistake. We can never, ever do that mm-hmm. again. That was the right change then. <clears throat> it would have yeah. been the right change now. Watching Heuberg and Skip trying to play at 10, 15 yards to each other because they they have to be spread out based on the system. No, you need to have someone there. They, they, to me, at least, if, if Saar is standing in front of Dyer then Saar is the one. Saar's got the mobility. So, again, he's only a kid, but I think I've seen enough of him to know that he can play the ball quite quickly with either foot. He knows what to do. And Skip never looks comfortable doing it. Hoiberg certainly doesn't. No. And you just wonder, like, you know, when, when you've got, like, like, I'd have been happy to not see Dan Juma if it meant that Saar came on. That would have made more sense to me. Whether it was for Sun or Kulusevski, it didn't really matter. Probably would have been for, for Kulusevski for me, but still, like some kind of logic that you know Everton have they've they've switched to a back or they had a back four, but it's a different back four. They've moved people forward. They've brought on the big number nine. Do something to to stop them winning the ball in midfield, and we didn't do that the entire game. Mate, like you hit the nail on the head. Oh, sorry, I'll let it come to Craig in a minute. No, but go on, go on, you crack on. Keep going. Skipping Hoybier, like you said, doing those little passes or those backwards passes, they're not even doing them quickly. They're not even doing it quick. So, like, you move people around. I mean, I, don't, I, I was going to say some of them, but I'll probably get... Well, but they, we are so slow. We do things at, like, pensioner's pace. And, and it's just like they were 10 men. And you, we got to try and move people about. But we just haven't got that about us. There's just no pace to our team. We've got a couple of fast players. But everything we do is slow. And I just think that we've been used to playing for so long now without the ball. Like, when we had Potts, we used to have lots of the ball. And if, if it didn't work, we couldn't break someone down. But we had the ball and we moved it about and we controlled the game like that. We're just not used to it now. It's, we're just not very good with the football. No, and, and, there's no, and there's no running off the ball either. Like, I no. saw that from Everton. Like, they, they would throw the fullbacks forward. They it would try be. and make runs off the ball. Spurs don't even, do that at all. Even a Wobie yeah. would move, not lay it off and continue running and get it back. We don't see any of that. I'll just point out, Scott said here, nobody would pass to Heisenberg and Skip. Isn't that a Breaking Bad reference? If you mean, is that your autocorrect, Scott? Just changing Hoybier to Heisenberg. Anyway, um, I think the <laughs> trouble is we just like it's, Skip normally is more progressive, but today every pass went backwards. I don't know whether it's just because I mean you can't always see on the TV whether there just wasn't a pass on, but just every time it went backwards. Perisic obviously has to go backwards because he can't beat the player a lot of the time. Poro was the only one really, really trying to make stuff happen. And it didn't quite work. But what worries me is that Son and Perisic have been at the club now since what, August. So what's that, eight months together? It looks like they've never trained together. They have no clue what they're going to do. Longley 
obviously it's played with them both for a while as well and it's a bit better but i'm just baffled son has fallen off a cliff and we've t- discussed many times and hg called it early last season that the system didn't suit him but he as a footballer has to take some responsibility surely in stepping up and trying to adapt his game to find what will work but like you say hg his movement's terrible he's not running only a couple of times did i see him going to try and for a ball over the top do you remember the old alderville ball to Delhi yeah. in the old days yeah he's guaranteed a game it's... though mate what why does yeah. he need to why does he need to improve craig isn't it he's guaranteed a game isn't he <laughs> Yeah, no, I was just going to say that. Sorry. No, Craig, go. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was. I was just. I think for for me, I mean, the thing about the players, um, you know, playing this long and not having the ball, they don't know how to do it. I don't quite agree with that. Only because I think they've played like that for a long time for Spurs. But Romero doesn't go to Argentina and play with only 25, I'm 30% about, possession of the I'm ball. I'm talking about Spurs, Matt. I'm talking that's how we play. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, but but what I'm saying is the players are capable of playing possession-based football. They all do it with their international size. Even Hoiberg, when he goes away in internationals, they're not, they're not giving away possession. You know, they're playing with, you know, trying to dominate the ball. Um, Perisic, when he goes away, Son, when he goes away, Kane for England, Kulu, they, they can play that way. I think I think it comes back to it's just the way we set up tactically at Tottenham. You know, I, I just think that's what it is. And I, I think if we had a manager or a, a, someone that would be brave enough to say, I want us to go back to dominating the ball. I want us to, you should be dominating Everton with 10 men. You should be dominating. You should be dominating any team with 10 men, really possession based football. We didn't. I think there was a stat on Sky I saw after from from the point of the sending off, I think we 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 had like thirty forty percent possession. They absolutely bullied us. It's just it's just infuriating, and that's that for me has to be as as partly tactical. It has to be partly tactical. The way we set up, the way that we're being we're you know we're being set out there. It's just it's just not on. It's something's got to change. It's it's crap. It's crap. And and I, mean, I would say as well, to do it. for me... Sorry, Craig, go. Yeah, that's what I think. Exactly, HG, that's what I'm saying. They've been told to do it. Yeah, they've been told to do it. And it's not like they're not working or they're not running. I, You know, you, you saw today, I think the first half, you know, I think particularly the first half, they were trying. The effort was there. I think the problem is when the effort or the work is soulless, then you're never going to have anything. It just becomes... It just dies. And that's a problem. So there's lots. Of, I don't. I'm not saying for a second there's not intent from the players. There's not an, an effort in the players. There is. You could see it. You saw Romero pressing their their centre halves with the ball at times. You know the intent is there, but it's soulless. Why? Why would? What, what have they got to be happy about? Do you think any of those players, Kane, Kuliszewski, Son, want to come and play defensive based football? You know, low block, getting behind the ball. Of course they don't. How does that inspire one them? Nil down at one nil up and against ten men. It's just... Yeah, but they should. We but should can... be thinking. Isn't the isn't the Tottenham way? HG, what did you say? The Tottenham way. One nil, one nil up against ten men. Go and get the second. Go and get the third. Kill the game. Should be any Don't even give them an opportunity. Now. Especially against ten men. Do you know what I mean? Like we're playing Everton, who were you know unbeaten in three, but they've had a bad season. They're not a great side. And we're, we're, same same with Southampton two weeks ago. We let teams have the ball. They may be bottom of the league, but I bet you it's not because other teams have said, you know, they're so bad, we'll give them the ball. No! Other teams have gone out there and beat them because they know they're better than them. And at no point did Spurs even look like doing that as soon as they got win. Like, we get, we get the penalty, and, it's, and I'm sitting there thinking, I've got 25 minutes of this. I know exactly what's going to happen. We are going to stop trying to win the ball. We are just going to back off, and Everton will get some kind of confidence. I didn't think the goal would come in the way that it did, I thought it would be a set piece or something stupid, not a 25-yard screamer from a centre-back. But again, they're all the same. It doesn't matter with Spurs. If you have the ball, they can't score. So, I mean, I'm not even bothered about Sanchez being a, as a left centre-back. We all know he's rubbish there, so it, it, that goes on the management for putting him there. Move Dyer across, who's got at least a left foot. Yeah. But I, it just it, it strikes me as being, this is really basic now. Like, the footballers are, are doing what they're told to do, which, which I suppose... Any 
decent footballer will do because they want to play, right? If, but the thing is, right now, if Cellini says, okay, if you miss up, well, who's coming in? Because Lucas is now not available. Who's going to come and take their place? Do what you want to do. Everyone knows that a footballer wants to play with the ball. Even defenders, I suspect, would rather have the ball than not because then they're not defending. Like, no one wants to be... Like, just... It's so basic. I mean, it shouldn't need four of us to, to, to say this. All the people watching, they all agree. We all know this. And yet, for some reason, Spurs feel like they've stumbled across, you know, the, what, the, the golden ticket to football and we're going to win all these games by doing it. And we won't. We won't. We'll finish sixth we, if we're lucky at this rate. It's because just HG, crazy. We've been saying about, yeah. we won't win any of our away games the way we play. We've, we've been crap and lost or drawn against the really poor teams in the league. And the way we're set up and our attitude now, we will we will struggle away from home for the rest of the season and we will win a few of our own games against the poorer teams, but we probably won't beat Man United and we might struggle to beat Brighton because that is how we're set up and that is the mentality of the team. Now, we are just literally, looks like we're going through the motions. And I know Craig said, like in the first half, he felt they were... but I. They were putting it in and stuff like that. But I watched that and I don't see a team that are willing to go the extra extra mile or the extra yard to like win that game tonight, thinking this is Everton. This is a game we need to win to go third. We are going to, like when we've won up there before, we are going to put them to the sword. And especially when we're 1-0 up, I just don't feel that they do enough, that they're willing to go that extra yard. It's like you said, it's just all Bobby Basic stuff. It is just it's so soulless, boring. You know? It's yes, yeah, it's, it's soulless. It's soulless. It's the whole lot, mate. It's the whole. It's all of it's, that. It's a perfect yeah. storm of shit. I I don't believe for us. I don't. I just don't believe that they are they are motivated. And I don't mean motivated. They're not inspired. I think that's what we want. I want to see from a top. That's what you're talking about, Giver, isn't it? It's yeah. It's a player. That, the players that willing to go for a brick wall are those that are inspired. I yeah. want to. They're not inspired. They're not motivated. They're not. What are they? What are they playing for? They're playing in a system they clearly don't get any enjoyment out of playing in. Playing without the football, which they're not going to enjoy doing. Scrapping. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's we, no we, wonder that that we we have been hit by injuries and Benton Core is a big miss because he is a quality footballer. Who, but there is just such a lack of invention and the only like. Perisic can put a ball in. He's decent on the ball. But the only other real quality with Kulazewski not playing at it is Kane. Without Kane, and I don't want to say it's the Harry Kane, but without him, God, because like we we had a penalty tonight. I don't think we'd have scored if we hadn't have had that. I don't even, you know, we just didn't look like scoring. We've got no, no really invention. There's just making... no, no. Well, the Son yeah, was like, and Kane, Kane should have scored that header first half. That yeah, was, he should have done was, better. Yeah. I think he should have done better, mate. I think John was offside, but apart from that, but it's you like had the Poro one on the right, didn't you? But yeah, soulless. Yeah, I mean, there's... they they were narrow. We started off. We was we were actually switching the ball, you know, quickly. The centre backs were moving. Hoybier was pinging it wide, but Everton were quite happy to lap up those crosses. You know, Tarkovsky's been doing that for what ten years for Burnley, isn't he? That's meat and drink to him. And you got. Um, who was the guy at left back, the ex Norwich player? Um, Godfrey. Godfrey. Yeah. Again, he bullied Kulisevsky. I thought. Didn't let him have really yeah. a kick. I, I, I like uh, I like Ben Godfrey. I, I think I've said that before on the show. I think Ben Godfrey's a pretty good player because he can play pretty he much anywhere. Yeah. Well, now. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I just I don't think Spurs will be anywhere near him. I don't think they'll be interested. But I think Ben Godfrey is a good player, and he's you know playing for Everton. He's been injured a bit as well, but I just yeah, it's so it's so predictable. I mean, like if if I'm an Everton fan, I'm disappointed I didn't win that game because we all know what Spurs are like. Every team knows yeah. what well, Spurs will do. Brighton will play us off the park next week, no doubt about oh, it. Oh, oh yeah, we HG, we need to change our system. I said, I said the other day, we we'd get wouldn't get a positive result at um, Everton, which a draw really isn't against them because they're crap. We will play against Brighton and they will be playing it around us, creating chances. Possibly we won't win that and the crowd will turn and it will go bad. And then Levy will make a fucking rash decision and not get the manager. Well, 
I, I Brendan's just, coming, that's baby. The, that's the scenario I said a week or so ago, mate. There's, there's no, you know, we do not like Conte thing took ages. Yeah, I know there's all legal stuff in that, but it's just there's no nothing decisive, and it's just like oh, that's I can just see it, mate, against Brighton. Like HG said, they will absolutely pass us off the park. They will keep the ball. We'll be chasing shadows, and. Yeah. Pff, the next game we might have a decent exactly. result is Bournemouth. Well, I wouldn't even put my, you know, put your money on that but now. I wouldn't. Jack, Jack's point here about Anana. So, until Decore got himself stupidly sent off, and that was up there with one of the most stupid things you can do. And it was a red card. It, you know, Kane Kane played it. It didn't. I mean, he, he did have a mark on his face, but it didn't hurt him. Um, ultimately, they were dominating big time that beginning of that second half. And again, nothing was they had, changed. They had three midfield, At that mate. point, we should have gone to a three-man midfield. That early, I think. <laughs> they, but it's like, it it's just everybody knows. Everybody knows. Exactly. We've checked, we have, we've got the manager's gone. I know we've got his assistant. But there's a freedom now to change it. And we're still playing the same turgid crap, aren't we? Oh, why David, would he, though? Why, why would he? Why would he? Why would he? Why would he? I think he why would he? Why been worse than Craig. Stellini yeah, said before the it's game. To change it. Stellini said before the game he'll be doing the same thing, didn't he? Pretty much, maybe yeah. not those yeah, exact exactly words. That is exactly what he said. So if I'm the fucking, yeah. if I'm the chairman and I'm listening to that, I'm going. Well, we want you to do something different. That's why we've got. That's why we've got rid of Conte, put you in because we want something to change. But, it, but the chairman will just sit there. And think, well, we're fourth, you know, we're still in the hunt. Let's wait till we lose two or three in the row and we're out of it. Then I might have to make a decision. There's no leadership the, the, anywhere. But the decision will be, right, let, let's say we have a really bad April, right? We lose to Brighton and we lose mm-hmm. to Newcastle and we lose to Liverpool and we lose to Man United, which is clearly quite possible. possible. Man United are yeah. rubbish in midfield, but you'd, you'd expect them to beat us right now. Oh, they'll beat us. If that they'll... happens... What, 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 what does he do? No, he'll just he'll say, all right, buy Stellini and Mason can have a few games. We're not doing anything before the end of the season. That is the only change that will happen before the end of the season. Because no manager right now is going to choose Spurs when they think other options might be available. And when I say that as a team that, what, we're fifth? I mean, we're in a pretty good position. We're fourth. And we've got, a load we're of, fourth. we've got a load of, I think, decent players. But every manager is going to think, yeah, Spurs, uh, do I really want that job? They don't. I don't blame them. Same players. Expect nothing different. All right. Uh, Just wanted to answer Alan's question. No, Kane's only got five bookings. It's now 10 uh, until game, the end of game 32. I believe Romero's now got nine, including the cup game. So I don't know. Right. We'll beat six. But he got two two against City. We'll beat Bournemouth at home. I think we might have enough to do that. But I, I, I can't see us beating any of them three, Newcastle, United or Liverpool. No, and, I mean, Newcastle was super impressive yesterday because they, they beat just... Man United and it was, it was never even close. And I understand that Man United without Casemiro and yeah. without Ericsson, that's the Man United you saw last season. So we know how good they ain't. But, you know, Casemiro will be back by the time we play them. So I just, it's, you know, I, I don't look at those games and think that we're going to win any of them. Um, to be honest, have I have I thought that at all really this season? Maybe at mm. the start when we you know we started really well, but even though that start we still kind of there were a, f- a few fluke wins in there. It felt like, but it feels so long ago now that we enjoyed. What, you know, we won the first game of the season what four one, and we yeah. thought top of the league easy. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're we're onto something, and it's got progressively worse. And because of the options we don't have, thanks to all the injuries, I don't really see what we can do to change it. I know that some fans were hoping to see like something different with four at the back, but we don't have a left back. So if it's going to be four at the back, you're basically saying, right, the four is what well, Perisic at left back and he can't defend, Poro at right back who can't defend, and you're going to say to you know one of your centre backs, you can't play. But if you do that, you're just going to have to put someone in midfield. So Saar, in effect, becomes the third centre back. You're still doing it. That, that nothing can really change with what we have apart from the attitude and how we want to play. And do we yeah. want to have the ball? And if we want... To, because there are plenty of teams in the Premier League who play that system that we do. The kind of 3-4-2-1. But they have people who want the ball, who are comfortable on the ball. 
And right now we don't. We've got the two the two midfielders that sit deep just want to play the safe option, and the two midfielders like Kulu and Sun who are supposed to be get on the ball and turn. Sun doesn't really want to do. It. Sun will only turn if there's someone behind him, because then he knows he has to beat someone. He like he can get the ball, and there might be no one behind him, but because he doesn't expect that, he just plays it back quickly. I've seen it so often now. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to collect the ball on the half turn, and that's basically his job. Kulusevski, we know, you know, likes to kind of move his body and spin a couple of ways, but Ben Godfrey won the first challenge tonight easily against Kulusevski, and that was it. That was it. Then we, we we never really saw anything again. We've got to move away. We've got to get closer to our to our fellow players. We don't. And if you're not doing that, and you're not spreading the ball quickly then you're not spreading the ball at all. You're just going to play it into ever-decreasing triangles before one of you has to pump it upfield. It's so basic. I watched Newcastle uh, I yesterday. Sorry, Craig. Uh, um, John, I watched Newcastle yesterday, and as I was watching that game, I said there is no way at St. James's Park, with that atmosphere and the intensity that Newcastle played with, there is no way Spurs will cope in that game. They just won't because of how we play, how we are with the ball, the, the the setup we play with. They will take us to the cleaners. They the pressure will just fall on them and they will and we won't be able to get out and it will be a comfortable two or three nil win because we've got none of that and we will not change to adapt. And I just watched it yesterday and I just saw I, I mean they, oh, they were good yesterday and I just watched that thinking we won't cope with that. And when we go to Anfield, it'll be the same. And Liverpool have been poor this year. Mm. But they will be bang up for it at Anfield. They know they always beat us there. And their midfield will rat about the three of them, Henderson and whoever else plays in there with him. And they will just feed the wide men and we will crumble under that pressure as well. And we did it tonight with 10 men away at Goodison Park. Yeah. Well, I think we did it with eight men, a didn't place we? we always, a, place, a place we... Very, very often win. Oh, Not yeah, we haven't round, lost in the league there for 10 years. And even that was yeah. two late goals. And let's we be honest, mate, late goals, they, weren't very, they weren't very good tonight. They weren't very good. No, they, I mean, Everton don't have a striker. I mean, it's like a, three, it's like a four, <laughs> five, one, and the one is an attacking midfielder. Like, the only way they're really going to... They're going to keep... You know, I mean, they've scored what? They got a 2-2 draw at Chelsea right at the end. They got a two-two at home against Everton, or I mean, no, away against Forest or home against Forest. It's they, they, they don't look like a team that's going to score a load, but you you, you know that Deitch will keep things tight because he understands that that's the best way Everton have of winning, right? And you look at the the, the players that Spurs have available. Nobody thinks that how we're playing is the best way we could use those players. It's not even about whether the players are good enough. We all know that the players we have are, 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 are I don't want to say better quality, but they can play better than they are, and it's down to the yeah. manager. Whether it's Conti or Stellini, Stellini is no different from Conti. We saw that tonight. And I can understand why he says that tactically, maybe he doesn't feel like he has the options you know, with the players, but it, it's a it, desire. Get on the ball. Do something with it. I, I know that you know, it's very easy for me to sit here and say this. I, I, I wasn't that great at football. I was decent up here, but I couldn't control a football. But I, I, I just feel as if th th this is not difficult stuff. And it's not because Stellini you know, is, has, has only managed third tier in Italy. You don't need to have managed any tier anywhere to know that Spurs are not playing to the ability that their players have. And you look at that Newcastle side yesterday. Like, is it Sean Longstaff? You know, a trier. I don't really see much more than that in there. Jacob Murphy, same. Like, it's not as if they were playing with their best side. Almiron wasn't there. A, you know, um, Joe Linton usually plays. He didn't play. They had Willock. I mean, their midfield three against Man United was Willock, Longstaff and Grimarish. And it wasn't even a contest. Those three had them on toast because they're coached. Right. They knew and, yeah, what well, to do. That and, 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 and they feed off each other. You know, what I mean, like, I mean, yeah. we, we can sit there and say that the Newcastle home fans are a part of it, and of course they are. Of course they are. We all know that when Newcastle were flying, their fans are massively part of it. But you don't get that feeling with Spurs. We're all just kind of waiting for each other. The fans are waiting for the players to do something, and the players are waiting for the other players to do something. There is no 
organisation whatsoever. So, question for you lads. We've got, as we we just discussed, we've got Bournemouth, Brighton, Liverpool, Newcastle, Manchester United before the end of April. If we only get four points out of those games, we'll have done well. Can Stellini leave Mason and, and sorry, can Levy leave Stellini and Mason in charge? Can you afford to? Go on, Craig. I'll, I'll tell, I'll, on, well, Craig. I'll tell you now. Still, I'll tell you now. What, regardless of what happens, Stellini will be in charge to the end of the season. Is my view. Um, I just don't think anything will change. I think that um, the the statement from from the club from Levy was very clear that he will be in charge for the final ten games of the season. Um, and we got to unite to go to try and get top four. He will not change it, regardless of what happens with fixtures. Because what does he do? This is the other point, as HG said. There's, what's the alternative? We are not going to get anyone in as manager this season. So make if it's not Stellini, well, but what? who's going to come? This is the thing. I don't understand. Even I don't even think Poch comes. If you're Poch right now, do you come to Tottenham? Or, you know, at the very Spurs least... Spurs don't want Poch. You, Spurs don't well, want him. But even if we did, but even if we did, I don't think anyone comes. If you're any of those available managers now, available, let's just talk about those that are available right now. Honestly, who of those available managers do you think says Levy calls them tomorrow or next week after we lose to Brighton? Do any of them say I'll come to Tottenham? HG's mate, yeah. he'll he'll yeah, he'll, <laughs> he'll run there. My mate, he will. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I I would run there. I don't I don't, I don't put my mate forward. Brendan I would do Rogers. it. Brendan oh, Rogers, fuck mate. Off. Fuck off. He would though, fuck HG. Off. I'm not. I'm not saying him, but he would, wouldn't he? If he got the call he tomorrow, mate, you don't think don't he think would? So. No, I mean, not... I, no, I, I, th- I think, I think Rogers would absolutely take it. Of course, yeah. the guy. Well, like, I, the, I just guy, think, guy... I just think he's only just, he's only just, been, you know, he needs a bit of breathing space. I just don't think he'll nah. take it. He'd be, mate. He it's, will be there like a bullet right. out of a gun. If you're Okay. If, okay. if you're a manager, Question if you're a manager, sorry, sorry, right. no, sorry though, John, just sorry. very quickly, why would anyone come when we don't even know, who they don't even know, who their director of football is going to be? I don't think... I, has, yeah, on, on, yeah, honestly, if I was a manager worth my salt, I wouldn't care. Genuinely, yeah. I wouldn't care. The issue with Spurs is that right now, people, the, the only thing we can offer them is money. Money. So yeah. Anyone who says, "Oh, I, I, I feel like yeah, yeah. you know, eighteen months in North London, I'll get a nice payoff at the end of it, and if I do, you know, whatever I do, people will blame the chairman." I mean, that's what Spurs are, right? Yeah. It's a great place for a coach to go if you don't care about your reputation and you just want a nice payday. But unfortunately, of course, we don't want someone like that. But that that seems to be the, the where mm. we are. Like, I mean, but bearing in mind the FA Cup draw is what Man United, Brighton. And Man City, City Sheffield United, right? So, assuming that it's going to be, assuming Sheffield United don't make the final, then all of the European places are going to be from the league this season, right? That means four Champions League, two Europa League, and seventh would get the Conference League, just like we did two years ago when Mourinho was in charge, yeah. right? That's what Spurs are facing. It's not even about holding on to a Champions League spot or hoping that we can get it. Like we, we may miss out completely or we may end up with the Conference League, which anyone who doesn't live in Austria doesn't want. <laughs> I mean, I, right, I want my it question because they might you, come to Austria. That's the only reason I want it for Spurs. But it's just, that's where we are. I'm, like, I'm not looking at, at finishing fourth. I would love to, but I just don't think that we're good enough. Brighton are better than us. Man United are better than us. Newcastle are better than us. Yeah. So yeah. does that make yeah. us seventh? You know, I'd a, take a Europa Brent. League. Yeah, Europa League would be all right, but yeah. I, I, if, if Brighton and Man U both finish above us, then we're in seventh. Yeah. And that means Conference League. Only if Liverpool or Brentford finish above us as well. Well, yeah, but I mean... Surely if Brighton and Man U finish above us, we're sick. Like, Liverpool, obviously, because they play us, they're the most likely option. I don't think Brentford could do it. But Brentford have, what, lost five games all season? I mean, they'll pick up points yeah. regularly, no matter who they're playing. So it just, it, 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 like, it feels like, based on the season, Spurs will be lucky to get seventh. And I, I, I don't, I don't, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm never going to be one of those people who would say, I'd rather we got eighth than seventh, because I don't believe that. Like, if you want to build a squad that plays, you have to have lots of games. 
Otherwise, you can never, ever build a quality squad. You have to give your squad players the opportunity to play. And that comes in Europe. It doesn't come in cup competitions. So I, 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 or at least cup competitions by themselves aren't enough. So for, for, for Spurs to be anything long term, we have to have some kind of European football. But I look at that and I, 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 I wonder. I genuinely wonder. We are woeful. If it's not Kane, we'd be, we'd be where Chelsea are. If not worse. Yeah. It wasn't for Kane. Yeah, Craig, I, I know what, mate. I agree with you, like about, but like Rod, someone like Rod, I'm not someone like Rogers will come. But what I, I believe, but this, I think this is what will happen. I think the pressure will come on it, and Levy like will react to that. You know, like I, we've talked about maybe trying to secure someone and say they're coming in at the end of the season. But the wor- the, the more this football stays like this, the worse the crowd will get, and he will make it. A rush decision. That's my opinion. It might not be yeah. Potch or Rog. I'm just saying. I think someone would. I think. Come. Yeah. I mean, all, I, I, I don't dis. I, I don't disagree that he would. He may feel he's backed into a corner where he has to make a decision. But what I'm saying is, I'm not sure the people will that he may want to make that decision with yeah. will make themselves available to make it. That's my oh. point. So, I, I I'd say unless. Yeah, I just don't understand. I don't, but I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm with HG. I just cannot see a world where Rodgers comes into Tottenham. I just can't see it. I don't think, mate, I said in the group, look, he, he's like favourite with a book, isn't that? I'm like, there's no way Spurs will go for Brendan Rodgers. No, I don't think. Not, you know, I think they've, I think they've got their sights set a bit higher. But like the whole thing's just a mess, isn't it, really? It's just like we're going to be stuck with, Stellini and Mace until the end of the season and it's just pretty much the same like we were hoping if you move the manager on because of what was going on you do it for a reason so things change but nothing's changing and he's even admitting that nothing's changing so what is the point? Something has to change something has to change or you might as well put the kids in you might as well just put the kids in otherwise give give Mundo and a bit of game time what's the point? They're not going to they're just not going to do that. I don't know what changes, mate. It's just utterly depressing watching Spurs at the minute and like calling. You can pretty much call the subs. You can call how they're going to play. You can call what's going to happen. Like HG said, if he wasn't doing the show, he wouldn't have bothered watching because he knows how it ends. It's just, I can't. And, and, and the man at the top, mate, is the man that should be, you know, like you're saying, John, something's got to change. He needs to be the guy who's seeing that. And you know he's the guy. And he said, "I want some needed change. That's why I've changed. That's why I've changed them. If you know, if you're not going to do it, I'll get rid of you and I'll put Mason in charge." It's just baffling, mate. I, I said when we appointed Conte, for me it was it was Levy's last chance. You had to give him time and see what happened. We all assumed that they'd spend money, and they have spent money, but it wasn't as much as Conte needed for his system. And it's just. You know, he ain't going anywhere. The whole people can do as many processes as they want. The only way to make them sell the club is to find someone with a lot of money to buy them or to have that stadium empty week in, week out. But as we know, yeah. if every season ticket is stuck or the stocks are going, they'll just replace them with other people. And people John, aren't going to friend, want to waste their money by, like, by not going. A friend of mine put a post on Facebook the other day to all his mates and basically saying... Will you renew your season ticket if ticket prices go up? Bloody bloody blah, mate. And all of them said they would. They hate what's going on. They don't like this. They don't like that. But they support Spurs. They've been going for so long and they'll support the team. Yeah. And that is what 99.9% of people will do. So that isn't going to happen. I don't blame them for that, Gibbo. No. I understand that. Especially because if you lose, if you give a season ticket up, it's not yeah. that easy to get another because you and go to the bottom of the in, waiting list. Yeah, and people have had them in the same places for years, and it's what they do. And yeah. whether you hate the regime or the manager or the players, the crest on the badge is still your club, and that's what you do until you reach a certain point. So that part isn't going to happen, is it? I don't think. You know, yeah. that's not going to happen. People voting with their feet in the ground. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, no, we and, talk and, about and, him being Levy's last chance. Last chance for what? Exactly. Yeah. No, my, 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 you know, I, I, I've never been 
obviously we've been accused of being pro Levy and Enoch, and it's not that. I think majority of us have been very much middle of the road with it. We we've been well, some of us apathetic to a certain degree, but the frustration is that there is an element that's quite, you know, not violent. What's the word? Strong in the way in their yeah. opinions of the way they get very aggressive towards people, especially on Twitter. If you don't if you don't absolutely agree, then they start attacking you. Obviously, our very own David is now an international celebrity for being on TalkSport the other day, where everyone's like, this guy speaks sense, which is a rarity, because he rarely does, does he, to us. But <laughs> the way he put it across was very eloquent. He made the very, very good points. But at some point, something has to change. Now, I understand Levy actually doesn't want to be involved in the football side of it. He's tried to step back. That's why he brought Paratici in. But that is a massive cock-up. Everyone knew this was hanging over Paratici when we signed him. And it, you know, and I know they didn't know when FIFA were going to announce it, except for FIFA apparently did say they were going to announce it yeah. before the end of in... March. So the yeah. 31st of March, they announced that his ban is worldwide. So the club to say they were surprised is bloody ridiculous. And I and I have seen Donna Cullen's um, name mentioned about not wanting Poch. She is a PR guru, supposedly. That's her background. Why do the club keep making PR disaster after PR disaster? I just, I just don't understand how we can be so shambolic. We're a 500 million pound business and we run like a 500 grand. Well, we want worse than a 500 grand business. That's probably insulting to a lot of businesses that turn over half a million pounds. That power They have to get this mate. right. We cannot. And I have heard that we are really serious about company. Now, I don't know if Vincent Company will take it because he might want to see out what he's done at Burnley and go into the Premier League with them next year. He has got them. I mean, I think we've all seen them. They are playing some brilliant football, not on a massive budget. They lost half their players. It could be, might be too early for him. We saw what happened with Gerard, although I think that probably wasn't the right club for Gerard anyway. Could company go from Burnley to Man City? Is that too big a leap or does he need a middle leap? I, I, but I don't. I, I don't. I, I think Burnley can be that middle leap. I mean, all he has to do is keep them up and, and make them more stable, and he'll do what Potter did at, at Brighton. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I, I, th I think with with company, he can't lose. He got them back up. I mean, I know it's not certain, but they will go up, right? He's got them back up. He can have a season to try and keep them up. If he does it, then brilliant. But if he doesn't, I don't think it's going to hurt the, him, his reputation. But the, with the football they play. Like, I mean, you, you look at the, the bottom, what is it, the bottom 11 or bottom 12 or whatever, the, the amount of teams that are kind of, that could get relegated right now. If any of those played decent football, they'd be well clear of it. But they can't score goals and the Burn Burnley seem to be able to do that. So, I, I, I don't know. I just, and I, I don't think any manager who is on an upward trend would really consider Spurs if they were already in England or if they were already in the Premier League. I don't think Zerbi would. I don't think that uh, that company would if he gets up. You know, when they come up, I think I think you're looking at someone who wants to make a mark and thinks at Spurs, if I get it right, I can make a very big mark. Um, or you look at someone who thinks, you know, I'm never going to get this chance again, and I, I only really want to go for it. And I, I don't know how many managers that really fit that bill. Every manager, if they're in a situation where things are going well in their own in their club right now. Why would you give that up for Spurs? That that's the thing. I I, I just don't know why you would. And like, as much as I, I know that Evie interferes or however you want to call it, like I, I yeah I agree with you, John. I don't think Levy really wants to be involved in the football side of things. He would rather that it functioned without him getting involved, right? But unfortunately, yeah, it hasn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, Paratici picked Nuno. Big mistake. But again, like the fans didn't really want Nuno from the start. It felt like he was ninth choice, right? He got 10 games, five of which we won, five of which we lost. We didn't look like we knew what we were doing in any of them. So it, it, it just feels like that you, you need to, as much as I don't really want fan power to have much of a role, clearly it does. Clearly the fans that are paying through the nose to go and watch Spurs need to have some football to get behind. I don't care if it's some League One manager that has achieved nothing. If they play attacking football, they have a better chance of succeeding than half the people we've been linked with. Genuinely. Because I feel like for fans, if we watch players who are putting in a shift 
for 90 minutes and creating chances and doing all they can to win a game, you're okay if you, if you lose the odd one. Right, if you lose few, like it, it doesn't matter so much. But when you have to sit through what people are paying lots of money to sit through, no wonder. Like the fans have to be on side with whatever their next appointment is. And there aren't too many managers out there. I don't think that really fit that bill. There, there really aren't. What do you think about slot then, HG? About I, I, I mean, I, so. Arne Slot went to Feyenoord when no one expected him to. But I know that Feyenoord are traditionally a bigger club than where he was. He was at Alkmaar. Um, but Alkmaar were flying. Alkmaar had some good young players. Alkmaar had done really well. And he told, apparently he told Alkmaar that he wasn't going to sign a new deal. And then he was, in effect, caught negotiating with Feyenoord for the next season. Uh, and they sacked him because of it. Because they didn't want, you know, there the, was a massive conflict of interest that maybe he wouldn't want to get his current team to finish higher than the team he'll have next season. But he went to Feyenoord. They had a bunch of no-ones. Last year, they finished third in the Dutch League and got to the Europa Conference League final. This year, they're top of the Dutch League. Look like they're going to be winning. I think they're eight points clear with seven games to go. They should get over the line. And they're in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. I mean, that is steady progress for a team that, again, I don't think many of the people watching this will have heard of any of their players. Right, so this, I mean, like the Dutch football may not be on everyone's like things they want to watch, but you know you've seen Ajax in the Champions League. You know, you know PSV uh, historically, but Feyenoord, what, what he's done there has been incredible. But if he goes to Spurs, Levy would have to pay compensation because he's got two years left. I like him. I think he's a good manager, but I wonder. Like, does he really want to take the Spurs job on? I mean, I, I, I watched a lot of Dutch TV today trying to learn a bit more about him. And they a lot of their pundits came out and said that, you know, every now and again, you get a manager who is, like, better than the others, who actually makes a difference. And they feel like, look, you know, managers sometimes, it, it doesn't really matter about them, it's about the players that they have. But he's like, the, the, the pundits were saying that Slot is the reason why fine order are the, where they are. It's not the players that we've never heard of. It's the fact they play as a team, they play pressing football, they play attacking football, and, and, and they win. I think they've lost once in the league all season. So, it, it, like, if Spurs were where we were maybe 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, we'd look at him and say, yes. Unfortunately, we've had, what, seven, six, seven seasons of Champions League football, and Spurs won a bit more than just someone who's done okay in Holland. But he may well be the best available option because if, if Pochettino doesn't want it, or Postacoglu doesn't want it, or any of these managers that are in a situation where they're thinking, okay, we're, we're, we're all right, thanks, who are you going to convince? I, I, I do like Slot, I do. I mean, sorry, that answers your question. I like him. I just, I, I, I wonder what Spurs can offer. Okay. So Wednesday night, Gibbo and Craig and James are going to be discussing the potential managers, assuming Again. nothing's happening in the next 48 hours. But should we have a quick a quick run through the names that Adrian's given us here? Um, I will start. I'm going to get you off the cuff to give you guys a bit of a second. Rogers is a no, I think. Is that everyone agreed in that one? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Okay. The cat agrees no. as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Potter. This is an interesting one. How do we feel about Potter? Craig. <sighs> um, no, it, it before Chelsea, I think I would have taken him quite happily. I think the Chelsea, what he's done at Chelsea, I think tarnishes him a little bit. That said, he plays he plays attractive football, albeit with no end product, and he's English. Um, you could build a philosophy and you could build a culture around him potentially. But, um, yeah, I'm not as convinced as I was after Chelsea. You and know? I think there's problems There's problems at Chelsea, sorry. There's problems at Chelsea are the same problems we saw Brighton with them as well about his team's abilities to score goals. So I think there's a consistent thing going on there. The fact that Tottenham have the, best, the greatest goal scorer playing at the moment in the country, does that make a difference to Potter's style? Because he's not had proper strikers at Chelsea, has he? Not for me. I don't know. Don't think so. Well, you're assuming Kane's going to be here next season anyway. 
That's a different pod, man. Like... <laughs> I like I like Potter. I, I liked him before. The Chelsea debacle has put me off a little bit. And I was listening to a podcast today, the Athletic Football Podcast, where they were talking about him going and basically saying he's a really nice bloke. And then that's a red flag to me. Oh, he said like the Chelsea players at times they heard that they'd be in the change room waiting for him to come in and sort of but he wouldn't he'd just be nice. And I don't I think if you give some of this lot at Spurs that they'll just pull your pants down. So I don't think we need that. But I, I you know, every I liked him at Brighton. I thought he did I thought he was good and I, I thought with a with a decent striker, you know, he could do all right. So if it was to be Potter and they were willing to build something I mean, we'll go for all these, mate. I just want to see somebody who wants to manage Tottenham and wants to try and play a bit of progressive football and try and build something. So, when we go through these, there's not going to be many of them that I'd say no to because I think it's been so poor for five years. It won't take a lot to be an improvement on. You know, we had a, it was okay with Conte at the end of last season. But for five years, mate, I've just watched a lot of shite and I've had enough of it now. So... I'm pretty much gonna say yeah. Get whoever we go through all these. I'll be like yeah. Get them in. Let's back up. Okay. Right. HG Potter. I there, there are better options in that list um, than Potter. Okay. Who, I, who who who? Get me your top two options in that list. Then that's probably a quick way to do this because it's already two, eleven o'clock. Um, yeah. If I if I discount the fact that I don't think Poch or Nagelsmann, I would even look at Spurs' job right now. Um, my top two on that list would probably be De Zerbi and Postacoglu. Oh, Jay Penny will be a very happy man that you said Post Postacoglu. Um, okay, let me switch it. I'll get, Craig, I'm going to throw this one at you. Who is the most likely? to be offered the job out of that group first. No, Nagelsmann, offer the job. Okay. <laughs> and, and accept the job? Not Nagelsmann. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> most likely to, um, yeah, accept the job out of that lot. I think, I think, I think De Zerbi would take it potentially at the end of the season if it was offered to him and we paid enough. I did hear. I think, there is a contract break clause at the end of the season, Pimez. I mean, he can't he can't leave during the season, but whatever the buyout is, far less during the summer period, yeah. which makes sense yeah. from Brighton's point of view. Yeah, I think uh, Postecoglou would take it as well at a heartbeat in a heartbeat. Ibo at the end of the season. What what are you asking me, mate? My top two, or who I think? Uh, well, do your top two. Start with that. Right. I think I'd like Nagelsmann and I quite like I quite like the thought of company. Um I think Nagelsmann might get offered it. We'll probably get offered it and probably won't take it. He'll probably fancy something bigger now. And out of all those, I think if you offered it Rogers tomorrow, mate, he'd be there like a shot. He takes it no matter what. Ten games oh, left. There's, there's no doubt. Games left. It. So, I, I don't think any of us want Rogers. So, um, mate, there's, there's, there's a few decent names there. If, if if given time and a bit of patience, and back in and the right people above them with the right ideas, because like the Spurs squad isn't awful. The Spurs squad isn't awful. A few but tweets. If you, if, if you include the players who are out on loan that yeah. are almost certainly coming back, yeah. I just like I mean, again, it's all about are we a better option than what they currently have? Like, I don't think there are going to be many bigger jobs available than the Spurs one this summer. Like, I think the Chelsea one would count as being a better job for managers. The PSG job, if it becomes available, which it might do, I think some managers will be like, I mean, Tuchel's been there, Pochettino's been there. It's a nice place to go for a couple of years, earn loads of money, have very little pressure and kind of work on a few things before you go, go to your next big club. Um, and Real Madrid, possibly, although I haven't really kept up with what Ancelotti keeps on saying. Outside of those three, I don't see any jobs bigger than Spurs coming up. So all those managers, like is Amarim going to do another job, uh, another, um, another season at Sporting? I don't think so. 
Um, but again, like if there was an Italian team or a Spanish team that might be the next step, he might go there. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, that, that, w- that would be a more logical step for Amarim. He doesn't need to make the jump to the Premier League straight away. So, yeah, I, I wonder, like, is, is Glasner really going to leave Eintracht? Like, does Potter really think his next best move is to stay in the Premier League? Maybe he doesn't. Maybe Ajax. He'll go to Ajax. Because that would be a pretty good move for Potter. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's kind of... Uh, Spurs, I mean, it's obvious, but, you know, we are sixth of six. Um, we might be seventh of six at the end of the season. But when it comes to the big six in England... It's very difficult to win something at Spurs, right? It's, I mean, as we've as we've shown, it's quite difficult for Spurs to get into the Champions League. The fact that we've done it in the last few seasons is te- is testament to the fact we've had some very good players. But it's not easy. Spurs have, will, will not find it easy. Even though we've got more money, we will still be the sixth of six. You know, our, our Arsenal sadly have made sure that they will be above us now when it comes to that. Last summer. Spurs and Arsenal were a toss-up. Probably we were the more attractive club to join, but now we're not. So I, I just, I, I wonder which manager is going to look at the Spurs squad and say, you know what, I want that challenge. Because it would take an, it's an awfully strong man who's going to say they want that. Because uh, uh, they're, they're I've got, the, I've got, be I've got it. I've got oh. the answer. Kerry has got the answer for us. <laughs> <laughs> three, three or four players, mate. It could be worse. And the, three or four players and the right um, attitudes. We're back on. We could be back on track. Like we've got some half decent players. This squad now is better. We've got better players than when Poch came in and pushed us on. Get all those players fit. Get everyone back in. Get a manager in that wants to, you know, has some idea and some direction. Get some. You know, we don't need like. Oh, we need Bastoni. No, we don't need Bastoni. We need better players than what we've got. We need better options that we can afford better than what we've got. And we are capable of doing that. But what needs to happen is the people at the top need to take some responsibility, get hold of this fucking club, look at the direction they want the club, um, football to go in and pay some attention to the football side of it and get it back on track. Because it ain't that far off being a decent team. I mean, the, we've been crap this year and we've been round fourth and fifth all season. Yeah. It just needs a bit of care and attention and it isn't getting enough of that from the powers that be at the club. And that's what needs to happen. And the quicker like, they it, do it, the fucking better. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, historically, the, the three managers that we've had that have been successful would be, I would say, Yull, Redknapp and Poch, right? Yeah. Redknapp's thing was that he knew how to build a team. It may have been very basic, big man, little man, like box-to-box midfielders, one that sits, old-fashioned wingers, but he knew how to build a team and he did it at Spurs. He built a very good team at Spurs. Um, with, with with Yol, I felt like, you know, we, we again, we had some very good players. It was a bit a bit, a bit less orthodox, but still, he turned that, that bunch of players into a decent side that finished fifth a couple of years, got to the... Um, we didn't get to a final under Yol, but we did really well for Spurs. It was really well back then. He right? was a start. Yeah, he was a start, and, wasn't and, it? And, HG? and then Pochettino came in and basically took a bunch of players that we already had. Right, a, a lot of that team was already at Spurs when Poch came in, and I, to me, he built a system that masked their weaknesses. Right, like Danny Rose, I don't believe he made Kyle Walker and Danny Rose better players. I think he just said to them, "Your job is to basically just run up and down the wings." If you've got the ball, brilliant. You don't have to cross. You don't really have to do much with it. Just just make sure that you provide Control. that that width. And then you've got the pace to get back if we're in trouble, right? And he had a really good centre-back partnership that basically said, you know, we can leave you two because if we're pressed high up the pitch, all you have to do is mop up. So it made everyone look better than maybe they were. right? But I'm all right with that. That's what a manager should do. This is not yeah, a negative. That is a manager's job, isn't it? Yeah, it's Polish not a league for Pochettino that I don't think he improved the players. It's That's yeah. literally their job. A very good manager will take good players and make them perform better. You've seen people leave Man City recently and they haven't looked as good. Right? They haven't looked as good, Raheem Sterling. They haven't looked as good. And so 
Like it is all about the manager. It is all about the system. You can have great players, but if the manager doesn't know how to use you, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's not individuals. It's a team game. <laughs> Love it, Ted. Right, we've been going for an hour and nine. Please do click the like button. There's only 38 likes for 109 of you watching. Um, and please do give us a comment in, um, after the show if you're watching on Catch Up. Let's say Gibbo, Craig and James and maybe someone else will be here on Wednesday going through the managerial candidates. I'm sure at some point we'll do a director of fo football candidate, but that might need to involve HG, although I think he wants the job himself. Um, and then Friday we'll be back with a right I'm, I'm available Daniel I am available and I think I'd be alright I mean I, I don't want to you know, blow my horn too much but like I'm not under investigation for fraud so that's a that's good a start, start. Um, although good start. obviously that there's a lot of people who are probably in that situation but still like I watch a lot of football I don't really have a proper job like, I, like I'm better than Hitchin yeah, of course that's not a proper certain. job not really. But also, you are you are also a German football commentator as well, HG. I don't know if people well, know yeah, this in your sideline. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. But we don't talk about that too much. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to be picking players. <laughs> you know. I'm not going to be picking players from the German third division. But uh, the, you know, there Thanks, are some Scott. good players around. There are. Well done, um, Scott. So yeah, Wednesday nine o'clock, the boys will be back. Friday nine o'clock, Brighton preview. Caller might turn up. You never know, and somebody else will be here once we've worked out who's doing the show and then uh, obviously we've we've got uh what could be quite a talk because the atmosphere gibbo on on saturday if it goes a bit wrong what do you think yeah no doubts mate no doubts it will do i'm just i just i do genuinely i, I just do want something positive to talk about mate it's pissing me off now it's just not fun to watch i want to enjoy watching my team play football Listen, there, there's one big positive that's come out of tonight Nine games left. I no, no. Well, there is that. The other one is, I was at half time. I was rather frustrated and decided I'm not putting up this anymore. So I put my Brighton ticket on the exchange, and some poor son has bought it. <laughs> oh, I mate. did get Why, it. Right, right, right. Why have they done that? <laughs> but anyway, I won't be going on Saturday. I I don't blame you. Um, I I did get offered a ticket a few days ago. I had to turn it down, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, and now it would appear. But um, yeah, so thanks for joining me, lads. Craig, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, thanks. Always enjoy it. It's been a bit of um, a fair bit down tonight, so it's good to come on and and share the pain with you guys. So it's been good. Onwards and upwards. There's, tomorrow's a new day. Uh, thanks for not exploding, Gibbo. Yeah, I've been down for ages about it, Craig. So sick of the football now. I really am. So I will. I'm hoping to get more positive next season but i i can't stick this shit football anymore it's blowing my mind but thanks for having me on mate great show yeah cheers for the positivity yeah. and uh all the way from vienna hg yeah I, I i want to get out there now tomorrow i will be supporting chelsea <sighs> um and bournemouth as well because again like it's not over it's still possible other teams could be worse than us that's what we're going for. How many teams well, will end up way, worse than Spurs this season? There we go. Yeah, that they must be terrible. They really must be. So on that note, everyone's looking at their phones. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>